Hello again, welcome to a new video. In this video, I'm going to do something special with this garage and I'm going to create a living space for a pool table. However, as you can see, it's not a big garage and it's very cold. It's November and it could snow. Um, so what we need to do is put battens on the wall and put brackets on there um, but we can't drill into the, the concrete panels because we could damage them. So I'm just going to show you um, how you attach it to the wall. Different garages have um, different ways of attaching uh, battens but this is the best way that I've found. So let's have a look. So here we have one of the wooden battens, two metres high. I've uh, adapted some legit Compton, um, sorry, Compton legit uh, brackets that fit on their garages. But unfortunately, as you can see there, there, there's an angle there. Put it on there, you can see there's an angle. On Compton garages, it's straight with a bolt. So I'm going to have to adapt these and bend them a little bit. So if we look over here, I've done that already. We've got a bolt that goes through the original concrete and then another bolt that goes through the wood and as you can see I can move it try and move it I can't because it's really sturdy and secure so once you've got your battens on as you see I've prepared the battens ready to go on the walls but once you've got your battens on the walls you need to uh, put some insulation there I'm going to use insulation board Celotex or Kimping um, it's just foil with yellow insulation in the middle and foil on the other side to give you some insulation and we will need to do some with the roof as well. Um, but I'm doing this video just to show you where I'm at the moment and let's get on with the next stage uh, which is um, getting the insulation on. So I'm going to put the insulation up, but I just wanted to show you that I've put up the wooden battens and I've uh, modified um, some um, brackets that I got off eBay, um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I've also attached some pink grip to the end of the bolts to try and support them, because they are roofing bolts and they're not heavy duty. So obviously I needed to support them. Um, and basically what, what I've been doing is putting all these wooden battens on. So I'll just show you what I mean. So there's the wooden battens that I've put on. Um, in order to connect them, as I said in my previous video, what you have to do is find the panel where they put a bolt through and, and take the bolt out and put your own in there. and make a bracket. Now you can buy some Compton brackets they're about 12 for 25 pound they're quite expensive so what I did is I went on eBay and got some of these um, which are very similar you just focus um, they're a lot cheaper I got uh, I think it was 10 pound for 20 and I just drilled holes in them and uh, attached them just remember there's going to be a lot of hard work putting these on it's not easy um, because you're having to drill through that piece of wood. I also attached a, a secondary piece of wood there uh, just, just to even it out and make it more square and that is really sturdy and strong. So the idea is we're going to put some of this Kingpin King uh, insulation boards that we have here. We're going to basically glue them using um, some foam adhesive and we'll just glue them on to the actual boards. And then after we've done that, the next stage will be just to screw some plywood onto the battens. That's what they're there, what they're there for. So you can attach wood to um, the sides of the concrete panels because we can't drill into this. The reason for that is there's, apart from the concrete not being very uh, rigid and strong, as you can see here, uh, a bit of it's come, up, come apart and you can see the inside of it but it's steel reinforced 
so it's not easy to drill into it. So in the next video, I'll show you the next step once I've put all the um, the insulation bars in. Um, but what one thing I did decide to do to add to this construction is put some wood beams across. I did one there, a little one there, and one further down here. And what I plan on doing is going to put three power points, um, three double power sockets, as well as a USB socket here. And I'm hoping to get an electrician in and modify the lights in here. Because what I want to do is have a standard dining room light there and a pool table light over here. And obviously this is the space. Um, so it gives you, I suppose it gives you a bit of an idea where the insulation is, what the pool table size will be, because it will be seven foot. And it's about probably a little bit shorter and probably a tiny bit in in terms of the size of the pool table but i just wanted to give you a video on my journey on creating this hopefully this won't be too boring this video um in terms of cost if, if you'd like an idea so in terms of cost it's not cheap so in terms of the wood the wood, wood battens i'd probably say i've spent something in the region of 200 pound uh, that's about 30 uh, two and a half meter pieces of wood basically i think it's uh, 45 by 70 mil if you're wondering um i probably spent something in the region of 100 pound on the actual bolts as well as the uh the um, brackets and the biggest expense is the actual insulation uh, this insulation i got from seconds uh, online. I'll put a link in the description box if you want to get hold of them. Um, um, it's basically not quite perfect insulation, but it's good enough for um, my purpose anyway. Uh, expensive though. Uh, I got 18 sheets, which works out about 17-ish pound each um, for about 400 pound because you've got a factory in delivery, which was 40 pound, and uh, VAT. I think, I think that was 67 pound. Um, and then the plywood, the plywood itself uh, was around £530 from Wix's. Um, I've got 10 sheets. I'm not sure if that's enough in this build, so I may need to buy some more. Just wanted to give you a rundown on costs. It's not cheap. And that doesn't include accessories, extras, uh, lights. The pool light system I'm going to get is, was about £100. Um, and obviously a dining room light was about £30-ish. So your costs do mount up, that's before you even bought your pool table. And don't forget, I'm going to have to do something with the floor. Because it's a bit creaky, it's old concrete, so I'm going to have to put some sort of um, uh, a wooden floor down. Uh, it's not going to be cheap to do that either, or easy for that matter. So, just thought this video was a bit informative, um, and watch for my next update. See ya. Um, so I thought I'd just to show you more or less what I've done. Here I've actually put um, an aero socket there um, so I can mount a TV on the solid wood there. Uh, the insulation is Kingspan. Um, and I did get it for about £17 um, for a sheet of uh, 2 metres and 2.4 metres um, by 1.2 metres I think it is. So as you can see I've got the majority of the walls done. Um, this is going to be a small playroom where I'll put a pool table. Um, as you can see I've still got the roof to do which is going to be a challenge as it's just standard corrugated um, concrete panels that we make um, so obviously 
it's going to take a bit of thinking about how to put it on there. However, I just wanted to give you a quick update and show you where I'm at at the moment. Let's see if we can go back and you can see the room from further back. It is a bit of a mess, I do apologise, but uh, obviously it does take a bit of work. Um, and I'll show you uh, the roof next. Oh, okay, thanks for watching. Hello guys, um, welcome to a new update. So I thought I'd show you where I'm at. Um, basically what I've done here, I've put insulation in the roof and in the walls. Um, about half the garage is done. Um, cost wise, it's costing me about £400 in insulation and about £500 in the plywood I'm going to put up on the walls, which is going to be on top of the insulation. Quite an expensive do this is. Anyway, without further ado, I'll show you where I'm at at the moment, and then in a further update, I'll show you what I've done with the walls. But essentially, we're waiting for an electrician to come to put some um, power points in. I'll show you that part later. Obviously, there you can see I've got um, my boards up in the roof, but above that, it's it's insulated to more or less the end of the garage. And um, as you can look around, hopefully this gives you more of an idea. I've insulated the roof there. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I thought I'd just show you what I've done in the end gable part of the roof here. Um, cut the uh, insulation to size there. Um, I've um, put some wooden blocks up where I will attach the plywood to. Um, and if you're wondering how I actually attached the actual insulation to the roof I just basically nailed it in there there's nothing in terms of glue up here holding this up um, and just one side note is the, the, the most difficult part of this project is the angled roof so as you can see I've got a gap here so this is a bit of a dilemma I'm not sure what we're going to do there but I think an idea is I'm going to box it with some wood and angle some plywood going up, something like that. Um, in terms of our power points, when we get an electrician, I plan on putting a, a socket there and we move it over across the room there, another one there, and I've built um, another section there for, uh, I thought I'd put a USB power socket there. Further up, I've uh, attached three pieces of wood there, um, and we've got a, a coaxial plug there, socket there, for a TV, because I thought it'd be a good idea to mount a, a TV on there, on a moving arm, so you can move it about. And I think that would be a good, a good idea. Um, at the moment, where I'm at, in terms of the insulation, I've been um, filling in the gaps with expanded foam. One side note guys, if you're using expanded foam, please use some gloves. Once you get it on your hands, it takes hours to get the thing off. And if, it, if you get it on your nails, I don't know if you can see there, but uh, I've got some on my nails there. Anyway, um, it can take hours to get, get the stuff off. So use gloves when you're doing any sort of um, expanding foam projects. Over here, we're going to have a light switch. Um, my plan here, is to remove one of these um, neon lights that you get in garages and I'm going to put um, a light fitting in the corner there and approximately around here I'm going to put a pool table light um, just across there um, and that will be above the pool table and I suppose that gives you a rough idea of where the pool table will be where that piece of wood is um, approximately about a little about a few inches shorter and an, uh, an inch um, less wide but that's more or less gives you an idea of where the pool table will be based um, but going back to previous videos obviously 
you can see what I've done there. I've um, bent brackets, attached it to a piece of wood. Um, the bolt goes through there, um, and there's another bracket on the other side that holds that in place. Um, I'm thinking about possibly putting some more brackets along here so I can use the insulation up a bit more. And then obviously there is the garage door which will want insulating at some point. Obviously insulating the garage door at some point is going to be a challenge and we'll have to figure that part out. Um, over here we have an electrical box. Now because of where it's placed I can't really move it. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to probably box this off um, with a, a box and insulate around it. And then at some point I was thinking about getting a garage door um, that you can open to the side of the garage so you can gain easy access. So that's the next step. Um, hopefully this is a bit informative in terms of uh, putting insulation up. Um, because and I do appreciate there's not a lot of videos out there telling you how to go about it. The one thing I want to give you some advice about putting when you're putting this stuff up is um, be careful, wear um, a mask um, because it does give off a lot of nasty dust. Um, that insulation dust can be harmful to your health. So please, um, you know, look after your health. Use some glasses as well because it gets in your eyes a lot. Um, some goggles would be useful. Um, but I just wanted to give you a bit of a walk around and show you where I'm at. Um, the hardest part, I think, is getting it cut to size in the roof. Um, so hopefully this is a bit informative and thanks for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. In this video I just wanted to give you an update. I've put the insulation in, in the roof. I've uh, got an electrician in to do some power points for me. Um, and the next stage is going to be boarding up the plywood on top of that. Um, I've used some expanding foam to wedge the actual boards in on the walls. Um, unfortunately, it's a lot harder work than I thought it was. The next stage is going to do a wooden floor, but I thought I'd just give you a little look-see of what I'm up to at the moment. And then after that point, um, I'll show you the rest. So here we have the insulation board. As you can see, I've used some expanding foam in, in the gaps to basically wedge it in place. Um, I did have a bit of a gap here, which I've used expanding foam on, where the actual supports for the actual roof are, um, to just basically fill that gap up. Um, I've got an electrician in, which um, obviously we're going to put a power point there. Let me just show you where the cable runs through. Um, and the plan is to put a pull table light there and have another um, standard fit in there to light the room. Um, obviously we've got another power point there and another one there. And I'll just show you the cabling as it goes up and it's basically going all the way along there through that gap and along and eventually down um, if you're wondering what I'm going to do here I'm going to put a TV there so that's why I put a TV um, coaxial socket there and there's an aerial outside but obviously I had to build a frame support for the actual mount for the TV so I'll drill directly into there and I won't have to touch the concrete panels. Um, and the reason I decided to do this video is a lot of people, the reason I decided to do a video on this are in there. Um, and it is extremely, extremely strong. I'll try and just pull it, and it, it won't move. Um, so we've got, as you can see, 
the roof is quite low. And that's a problem because I'm six foot high and I've only got about maybe two inch gap. Um, I keep thinking I'm going to hit the roof every time I walk in here. Um, so obviously I can't build the wooden floor um, too high because of that. Um, so the idea is we're going to put these bands on the concrete floor. We're going to fit some 18 mil plywood on top of that for the floor. I decided to use the off cuts of cut old garage.
goes along the roof. Obviously you can see some cabling there. So the uh, power um, is running uh, through this um, baton that's running alongside the two battens that I've got there. Now it's uh, so the electrics um, was, is quite a challenge. So I've drilled a hole through this side baton that's attached to the two battens going vertically. Uh, it basically runs all the way up there. As you can see, there's a cable in there. Runs all the way along here. We've got cabling there for the lights. Some more cabling for another light there as well. It runs all the way down there um, to where I've attached. Obviously, we've got cabling there, as you can see, which I've had to drill a hole through the plywood. Um, so, we're going to duplicate what's on here over there, and hopefully, this gives you more of an idea of uh, where we're at. Um, there's not many um, videos on YouTube on how to go about doing this. So I hope you find this video informative and I'll see you in the next update. Hello everyone, welcome to another update. So, we're converting this garage, this um, concrete um, slab base garage, into a games room. And I thought I'd just show you... Hello everyone, welcome to uh, an update on this video. Um, in this video I'm just going to talk to you about the corners. Because they are the hardest things to figure out. So what I've done is I've put some of this insulation board against the main parts and filled it in with foam. So I'll just show you what I've done and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. As you can see I've uh, put a lot of foam in. It's quite expensive this stuff so if you're going to get lots of cans you might need more than you expect. Um, so I've done the corners where the actual roof meets the walls I'll just go over here and show you what I've done in this corner, as such. You can see, I've, uh, you know, spent a lot of time doing it. And if we just move back a little bit, I'll just show you where we're at with the actual plywood. So I've uh, plywood the uh, bottom part of the wall, as you can see. Done a bit up there. Uh, we've got some more over here, um, and I think we've done a half decent job so far. Um, but one thing you need to keep in mind is it is expensive. Um, this plywood here that I've got on the walls, uh, I've got another four boards as well, uh, set me back about £500. Um, and that included obviously the six for the floor. I've got 18mm plywood for the floor and 12mm for the walls. So if you want to keep watching and wait for another update, um, I'll show you where we're at um, in the next couple of days. Alright, thank you, bye bye. Hi guys, um, I thought I'd give you a little update on the uh, conversion of the garage, uh, concrete based garage. Um, so I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, we're getting somewhere now because you, as you can see behind me, I'm applying the plywood on top of the uh, the insulation board foam. So let's. I'll just show you what I'm doing. So as you can see, I've applied the plywood to the walls. So it does look like it's coming along. The challenge I'm having here is how to apply the plywood to the actual ceiling because there's not many wooden rafters. So my solution was to apply the plywood but leave a gap at the top. 
and I'll just simulate what we're going to do. Here, we're going to slot in a bit of plywood there, and then we can nail it to that wall, that rafter in the roof, and another one further up. So I just wanted to give you a bit of a demonstration of how we're going to put it in the corners, because with a concrete based garage, you have nothing to apply it to. So I just thought I'd show you where we're at. You're wondering what that is, it's an aerial for a TV. Um, one of the difficult things is the roof, cutting the wood and angling it right. Now I don't possess, possess the necessary tools, so it's trial and error um, and just guesswork with a, a tape measure. But so far, we're not doing a bad job. So I just wanted to show you where we're at with the conversion. Um, as you can see, um, I've also finished doing the insulation for the roof throughout the entire garage. If you're wondering what, what those things are that are hanging down, it's just, uh, in, it's just foam that I've sprayed into filling the gaps. Um, so I just thought I'd show you where we're at at the moment. Um, it is coming along. It is a work in progress, but it is starting to look like a game room now. And uh, I'll show you my next update when I've got the time. Thank you. Bye. Hello everyone and welcome to an update on the conversion of the garage. So I thought I'd just show you what I've done and where I'm at and uh, hopefully this would be insightful for anyone who wants to do something similar um, since there's nothing on YouTube on how to do this. That's why I'm doing these videos. So let me just show you around. So please excuse the mess but as you can see um, I've used full size um, 2.4 meter by 1.2 meter um, plywood 12 mil boards on the roof. Um, I've also cut sections for the lighting. As you can see, I've got a um, cable coming down there and a cable coming down there. Obviously, we've done the walls. Um, if you're wondering what that's going to be, it's going to be a TV aerial. Um, there's another cable there for a power outlet. As we move across, there's one just behind those boards. That's the light switch. We're going to put a two point dimmer on there. Obviously there's a window there. I'm thinking about putting a PVC window in there as well. Um, obviously I've done the walls all along the garage, all the way along to the, as you can tell in the lighting here, but as you can see there, where there's actual a panel actually at the front of the garage, I've cut a little section in the actual plywood so it actually meets their flush as you can see. So as you can see it's progressing slowly um, and I'll give you a further update when we're further, on, further along I'm hoping to get the electrician in to do the electrics and I'll show you uh, and, uh, so the next stage is to get the electrics done so I'm going to get an electrician in to do that uh, the plan is to put a uh, 32 inch TV on the back wall um, but as you can see it's starting to look quite nice um, it takes a lot of work and a lot of cutting it takes a lot of work to do this so please don't be disheartened by the amount of money it might take because if I was to estimate a cost probably at least £2,000 up to present um, with the uh, insulation and the plywood. Plywood is really expensive. £30 for a two and a half meter sheet is quite expensive but it will look really nice when it's finished and the whole point of this is to have a nice playroom. So if my niece wishes to come and play she has a, a nice place to play in and away from the house. So hopefully this video will be informative on how you go about doing this. As I said, there's very little content on YouTube. As you can see, these are the concrete panels. Um, 
that we've had to try and insulate. So we, what we've done to insulate the panels is we've put um, foam board which has, um, right here you can see the concrete panels. So what we have to do is try to insulate the cold and keep the heat in. To do that we're using some foam uh, boards here that are covered in foil front and back to try and keep the cold out and keep the actual um, warm air in um, and that's the whole point of insulating these concrete panels and there's no one on YouTube giving you a video about this so this is why I'm doing this and hopefully you find this video informative Hi guys, I thought I'd do another update. Um, got a bit, bit of a problem here. Um, I've put down some floor leveling compound and it's been cracking. So I've decided to pull it all up, which is a nightmare, a pain in the butt. Um, but I'll just show you what I mean, how it's um, peeling. Someone at work suggested that it was too cold, being five degrees. I'm pretty sure I mixed it correctly. Uh, five litres of water for a 25 kilogram bag. Um, but I'll just show you the cracks that I'm talking about. As you can see, in the floor levelling compound, we're getting these cracks that are small. However, it means that I'm able to pull it up quite easily. So I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to have to pull it all up. Obviously you can see I've done the entire floor in it and it did cost me probably about £200 to put this stuff down. It's about one centimetre thick if we just get one of the pieces. You can see it's not that thick um, but it's li literally peeling up as I pull it up. So the plan is I'm going to mix some cement um, mixed with some fine stones, uh, basically um, a small concrete mix um, and we're going to put that on the floor instead um, because what I need to do is raise the level up to the point where there's some concrete here that's been put there to support the actual concrete panels. As you can see it's a panel garage. And my whole idea of using the levelling compound was to raise the level to the actual existing concrete because what was on the uh, originally was um, some old cement that was literally cracking to pieces so I pulled all that up and then I put this levelling compound down so as you can see I've made a bit of a hash here um, any DIY experts maybe out there who may or any builders out there might want to tell me why they think it's cracking so when it worked suggested it was too cold um, being five degrees or possibly a little bit below that because it has been cold um, that may have caused this however I'm going to have to pull it all up and I think this time I'll stick with my original idea which was putting down a cement um, and hopefully that will be a better material I've used concrete before and cement and in general it's a reliable product and substance uh, that's been used for hundreds of years but I just wanted to give you an update so as you can see I've made quite of a hash with this um, I know this project is taking a lot longer than I anticipated um, and it's costing me a lot more money than I originally thought it would um, but I thought I'd give you an update what I'm doing with the floor because that's the last thing that needs to be sorted before I put the wood floor on top. So, talk to you later and I hope these videos were, was informative and I'll see you later.
Right guys, um, just a further uh, update here. So, as you know, I've pulled up all the floor leveling compound that I put down. And here is a mixture of small uh, gravel uh, with cement. And I've had to do it all over again myself um, using cement. And uh, it's basically a small mixed mix of concrete really. Um, and as you can see, it's turned out not too bad. Um, this is the, my first time doing this. So it could have been better, if I'm honest. However, um, this is where we're at with the conversion of the garage. As you can see, it's a concrete panelled garage. Um, the idea here, this is why I've left the section here is I'm going to put a uh, door in there. I'm also going to put a PVC window there because that's just a single pane glass, not very secure. Um, and I may decide to um, block up the door completely and insulate that as well. But that's a job for another time because the main priority is getting the floor built and getting our cool table installed in the room as well as having the electrics completed. So what we're going to be doing in here in terms of electrics we're going to have a uh, two socket panel there for um, our electrics. We'll have another uh, two socket. I'm going to put a USB one here and we'll have another uh, two socket um, outlet there as well. And here, I plan on having a uh, double dimmer switch because what I'm going to be having here is we're going to have um, a normal, standard, typical spotlight system here and over here, I'm going to have a pull table light that will run along here. So the idea is we're going to have uh, the pull table in the centre with two lights, lighting systems um, and that's more or less the build. Um, I, thought, I think what I might do is also put a pool table um, neon light on the wall as well as put some sort of um, convection heater on the wall. I haven't decided which wall I will put that on. Um, however, one additional thing I've done is I've put a TV aerial outlet here. I just thought I'd show you the uh, aerial system that we've got here which is one of these small mini aerials um, which goes through the wall there through all the insulation and to that cable that you saw. So I just thought I'd give you an update on where we're at at the moment. Hi guys, a bit of an update. I'll just show you what I've been doing. Um, I don't know if you can see in the video, it's quite dark in here. But I've had to rip up all the uh, floor leveller. It's possible that for some reason... Oh, fuck's sake. Why are you focusing there, you dickhead? Hello guys. Here's a bit of an update. Um, I'm going to just show you the floor. I've had to rip up all the floor level. I don't know if you can see there. But I like to rip it all up. <clears throat> Reason it was it was cracking, and I spent a fortune putting it down. Uh, it's probably too cold if I'm honest for it. It was five degrees. So here we are with some cement. I'm going to put it down there, and uh, hopefully that will do the job of giving me a cell floor for the wooden floor. So you know, keep watching. And I'll give you more further updates. See you later. Bye.
Hello guys, welcome to a new video. Um, I'm just going to give you a bit of an update and show you what we're doing here. So, as you can see, I've uh, mapped out the uh, supports for the floorboards on top of uh, a new concrete um, bed. Um, and I haven't done a great job in terms of having it level, but hopefully what I've done should even itself out. After all, it's only a little playroom in a garage. So, in terms of what I did with the actual um, framing, I framed the corners out, um, so we had a solid support, and then we just screwed in the support beams uh, across the uh, frame. And what we're doing in the process now is putting down insulation. So here we have this XPS insulation board here, which goes down first. That's to give the floor uh, a good amount of insulation. And then standard polystyrene um, boards are going to go on top of that um, to give it a bit more insulation in terms of keeping the room warm. Um, and that's where we're at at the moment. Uh, I hope you know you see it just takes a lot of work and a lot of effort a lot of cutting um, and try and use strong screws rather than small ones um, because you need something to support the, the floor um, and if we're going to have a pull table here we need it to be really strong so I thought I'd just give you a bit of an update where we're at at the moment um, as we get on I'll show you more um, but we are getting close to uh, having at least uh, three quarters of the garage finished. Hello everyone and welcome to another day. I thought I'd um, discuss with you my um, conversion that I'm doing here. And uh, I think I'll give you a, another look and show you what's going on. So, as you can see we're starting to fill some insulation in the voids of the frame or for the actual plywood floor. Um, now, I've laid as you've seen previously, uh, a concrete cement mix on top uh, because the original um, floor leveller cracked. So it, it hasn't cracked the concrete that I put down, so it's been a solid foundation. The problem is, I didn't take a lot of care in actually making sure I leveled the concrete. And there are some dips here and there. So what I've had to do in order to flatten it out a bit so the wood is uh, at the right height is use some of this board that we've got here to raise the level of the wood so when I stand on it it's quite solid rather than quite loose and that's where we're at at the moment so as you can see it's quite important that you insulate the floor because it's going to be cold concrete and we need to have something as a barrier to keep the room warm. So um, I'm using two types of board. This is XPS um, foam. It's very similar to like um, a polystyrene hard board. Um, it's very dense and very hard and it snaps easily. And here I'm going to be using some insulate, uh, some polystyrene, you stuff that you get in your packaging. Um, it's, it, it seems to maintain temperature really well, and it's really cheap compared to you buying the normal insulation board that you use to insulate your house, um, look, look, such as uh, Celotex and uh, Kingspan. Uh, but this is a lot cheaper, and if you're on the cheap, want to do it on the cheap, use this stuff because you can buy it probably for a 20th of the price so I just wanted to do a, a quick update and tell you where we're at uh, 
taking a lot of time I know um, but I hope you find these videos informative because there's no one on YouTube doing this so uh, you know just keep checking out the updates um, if you've um, just watched a few of them do watch them all because it'll tell you more or less how to go through it how to do it from starting to finishing so you know it's really a good idea to watch everything anyway um, I'll show you the rest when I finish and uh, talk to you later bye bye Hello guys and welcome to another update on the build conversion of my single um, concrete panelled garage. Um, so I'm just going to show you what we've done, give you an explanation of why I've done it and hopefully you'll find this update useful. <laughs> so what we've actually done recently is we've put some skirting board uh, around the garage. Um, it's very simple to do, um, but you might want to buy a mitre box to cut the angles to make sure it uh, is okay. Just to give you further information, uh, if you've not watched any of the other videos, is we've got some um, electrical um, power points that has been put in pr prior to putting, obviously, the plywood on. So the power point there, power point there, an aerial point there. Power point there, uh, light switch there, further up here, we've got um, a, a point for a light, uh, which I'm going to put a pool table light there, and another point here for a light as well. But I've also gone further, and I've actually done the entire roof. Right, and so here we have a single pane, um, standard piece of glass that's over um, a, a wooden frame. This is no good for keeping any sort of heating or insulation and from a security point of view it's very easy for anyone to break in. That's practically useless against a thief. Right guys, I just want to show you an update on preparing the window um, for putting a PVC window in there. So what I've done is I've taken the old piece of glass, as you can see there, which is one pane of glass over there. And what, I'm, what I have done is I've framed it out with a bit more wood so it'll fit. I've also put um, some wood preservative on there. Um, I'm also putting some sealant on top of that. Uh, we've got some EPDM um, rubber here to protect for, for, from the weather elements. So that's what we're doing at present. Just wanted to give you an update on putting a window in there. Um, it's not easy. It takes a lot of work, a lot of sanding. I've had to sand that down from 18 mil to about 12 mil, um, so it'll fit. And then once we've got the window in, in there, we will be using some expanding foam to fill it, fill the gap. So I just wanted to talk you through it, tell you what I'm doing with this, and I'll see you in the next video. Right, I just thought I'd do a further update on the window and talk you through what I've done. Um, and um, hopefully this will be informative on how to put a window in. So, what I've done is I've took the original glass sheet out. And that's all it was, a glass sheet. So I've decided to get a UPVC window. So as you can see, it's just a standard left opening window. Um, but what I decided to do is, is I had to line the actual um, frame with a wooden frame that goes up, across and down. Then I had to put some EPDM rubber 
on that as well as I had to treat the wood as well um, and then once I did that I decided to have a look to see if it fit correctly um, I had to sand down the wood um, boards that I had put in to line out the original frame to, just so this would fit in there and then it was just a simple matter of um, putting some uh, sealant ad adhesive on the EPDM and putting that rubber on the actual wood that I put up there and putting the frame of this window in and then to seal it in place as well as screwing it in two screws there two screws there going in into the wood Hello guys, welcome to a new update. So in this update I'm just going to talk you through what, what's been done and give you a bit of a show round to discuss what has been done and what needs to be done. Um, so the overall length of this apex concrete panel garage is 7 metres. Now I'm going up to about 5 metres in terms of the conversion and at some point I've got to decide what I'm going to do about this wall. We're going to put some sort of door in the side and the front of the garage where the main door is, there's two um, school of thoughts regarding this, is I'll either just insulate the back of the door so we can have a front door still or um, put some sort of um, stud wall over the actual door itself and seal the door up with insulating foam. That's another option that we may, we may decide to do. Um, but I'll just talk you through what's been done. So we had the electrician in. We've uh, got the lights, lights set up. As you can see in the back, I've got a TV, 32 inch TV set up. Um, I just need to sort out the uh, cable because it needs a, the, the cable needs to be a bit longer. So if you're interested, you can solder two um, bits of um, cable together and then put some um, a sleeve over it, a rubber sleeve or um, some in, you know electrical tape over it. Um, but that's something I'm going to do later. Um, so we've got some pool table lights here, which is uh, it's about um, one and a half meter long. And this is a dimmable, because I've set up a dimmable, dimmable switch there. And we've got some main uh, um, spotlights at the back. I'll show you that later. Um, but I'll just turn it on so you can see it working. So let me just turn it on. And that's the spotlights, um, which um, seem to be warm light. And then we've got cool light um, in the actual um, pool table light, which it looks, looks quite nice. Um, as you may have seen in the previous video, um, I've put a new window in and some blinds there. Uh, we've got a heater installed there, one of those um, um, electric ones. Um, I've got um, an aerial socket there, because there's, there's an aerial on the outside that I set up. And we've got two uh, double standard gangway plugs here. And a special USB one at the back. Um, so that's more or where we're at at the moment. Now if you're looking at the front and you're wondering what I'm doing here is I decided um, four and a half meters four and a half meters isn't long enough because um, this carpet that I'm going to put down is five meters in length so I thought um, that I need to make it a little bit longer just so that if we have the pool table here, we've got a bit of room to walk around it, you know. So, um, as you may not have known, I had problems with using um, floor leveling compound originally and had to dig it all up and put cement and concrete down instead. Um, 
I should have leveled it a bit better um, and that's caused me quite a lot of problems. So for any advice who's, for anyone who wants to put concrete down, um, you're going to have to, probably the best thing to do is do it in stages rather than one go um, if you're doing a small area on your own um, because you need to make sure it's level as possible. And frankly speaking, I was getting a bit tired and I made a few mistakes. So this section here, I decided to put floor level of compound down. Um, it's only a small area, so it was more manageable. And I did a pretty good job. The only thing I had a problem with, as I mentioned before, is these panels, um, are, are basically, this garage is put in place of an old one. The old one was taken down. So they put, they left the existing concrete floor and then just put a bit extra around the sides. Uh, to make the garage wider and the, these um, concrete panels are on the, the wider parts of the, of the concrete they laid and we're in the process of um, just making sure that it's level as possible so what I had to do unfortunately was grind some of the concrete away to try and get it level so at the moment we've got this wooden frame floor where we're going to put some more um, plywood down and I think we're getting there, you know. Um, but I think it's looking quite decent now. Um, what I just want to say to people out there who want to do conversion is don't get disheartened with all the work that's involved. Um, at one point you may get bored and have and had enough of doing it and just want to go inside and play a game or watch TV. But you need to pe persevere because, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's worth it. Um, I want to run through some of the costs because I don't think I've mentioned it, really. Um, it's an expensive job, this. Um, the insulation um, Kingspan thermal sheets that I've used, uh, I've got about 18 sheets delivered for around £400 uh, from a company called Seconds. Um, do a search on Google, um, and they're, they're, they're basically quite cheap. And you know, I got 18 sheets for around 400 pound. Now, the plywood, mm, very expensive. For a sheet of um, 2.4 meters by 1.2, it's about 30 pound a sheet. And I think I've gone through about 30 sheets, if I'm honest with you. Um, so that's a lot of money. I think. I think. In terms of plywood, the costs are probably around the thousand pound mark because um, I had to buy it in bits um, and then I had to buy um, these kiln dried softwood. Now, it's probably advisable to use hardwood instead of softwood, but the softwood was cheap, so that's why I got that. Cost in terms of the framing of the entire garage, in terms of uh, the, the wood that I've had to buy, I probably rate that at probably around. Three to four hundred pound mark. Um, so, all in all, plus it's not just that. Obviously, the window costs money, um, and you know all your bits and bobs. You have to buy tools. You know, I had to buy a um, belt sander. I had to buy a new drill. I had a, a crappy blue uh, silver lime drill that was useless. Um, I had to buy screws, bits and bobs. So, I don't know if you wanna. Add all that in, I'd probably say there's probably about maybe 500, three to 500 pound in, in that because screws cost money, uh, insulation foam costs a lot of money. Believe it or not, I've used a lot of insulation foam cans. I've probably done about 30, 40 cans in total. Maybe I should have got one of those big containers. Um, but the insulation itself, the insulation foam, I'd probably say a couple of hundred pound there. So. If I have to give you a rough idea, about two to two thousand to two and a half thousand pounds I've probably spent. Don't forget there's also the lights I've had to buy, the TV, um, you know, um, I'll, 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 I'll do a quick tour for you so you can have a look what I've done so far with the lights. Um, we've got some, I don't know if you can see it in the video here, but we've got two um, 90 centimetre um, um, LED lights that, that I've put up um, for the end of for the front of the garage, just so there's light. And believe it or not, they generate a lot of light. 
and they weren't expensive. Um, these were about a tenner a piece. So, you know, they had good lights. Um, the uh, pool table light here, which took a lot of working out how to fit to the actual roof, um, was about £90. Um, the spotlight system here, that we've got spotlights on here, that was, that was about, I think that was about 30 quid, something like that. And then there's obviously the bulbs. The bulbs are really expensive because the dimmer bulb, you see, uh, as we've got a double dimmable light switch there. So the, the actual um, bulbs um, for the actual pool, ta um, pool table light is probably about £20. And about the same for the actual, um, you know, because they've, they've got a good, good deal on eBay. Because um, I noticed if I went to the local B&Q store, which is a hardware store like they have in America. Um, or in real expensive, I think they're about £20 a piece. So, you know, shop around on Amazon and eBay if you want to get cheap, um, you know, LED lights, because that's the, the future at the moment, um, getting the old style lights. They claim these LED lights last um, 15 times longer than the old, old style, so don't know if that's true, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give you a rundown of what I've done really. Um, it's, it's a difficult project to do, um, so don't take it lightly if you want to do something like this. But I noticed very few people on YouTube um, or on the internet, or if you do a Google search, have done any videos on how to do this. And it was frustrating because I couldn't find anything apart from um, an article on Compton Garages where there was about two pictures showing this, a brief description and not telling you how to do it. Because um, Compton Garages were selling some brackets and the brackets didn't fit. I had to modify them and bend them to, to actually fit the Concord grooves of the panels. So, you know, I just wanted to do a video to tell you about where we're at, you know, what I've done. Um, what else have I done? I've obviously put some skirting board along there. You know, it looks quite nice, doesn't it? Um, obviously we've lined the roof with plywood as well as the Kingspan um, insulation. The, uh, the actual expanding foam, the majority of that has been used in the corners. Because I don't know if you've watched any of the other videos, and I do encourage you to look at the other videos. Um, but the most challenging part of putting the wood in and the insulation in is when we get to that, that joint where the actual roof meets the wall. Um, because obviously it's very narrow, it's, 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 it's like that, you know, and getting the, the actual insulation in terms of that gap isn't great, um, it isn't that deep. So the majority of the insulation, in terms of it's insulating the actual garage to keep it warm, is in the roof and the walls. But that joint there is the problem. So I think that's where we're going to lose some of the warmth. Um, <clears throat> so let me just give you a tour and uh, show you where we're at. But um, I hope these videos have been informative on what you need to do to get this done. Um, but yeah, ju just one school thought. Um, in terms of an electrician, just make sure you've got a good one. Um, because get someone you can trust. Um, because what you don't want is someone to do a really bad job. Um, so hopefully yeah, you'll find this useful. So let's have a look. <laughs> right, let's start with the uh, LED um, column lights that we've got there. Let's move across. As you can see, another one there. And if we come across into the garage, as you can see, we've got our heating unit there, a TV and socket there, socket down at the bottom. Moving across, we've got this uh, nice pool table light. Over there, we have a free spotlight. <laughs> Hang on a minute. 
So there, as you can see, we've got a, a three spotlight system light um, giving good illumination to the room. Over here, we've got another um, gangway um, power outlet as well as our uh, double um, dimmer light switch. And obviously, that's the rest of the garage down there. But I just wanted to give you a bit of a brief tour, show you what we've done. Let me know in the comments what you think. Have I done a good job? Um, I think there's a few little jobs to do, such as putting down the carpet. But I think we're getting there. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think I've done a good job? And I hope these videos were informative. As I said here, this is the, the open area, you see, where the electrics is. Um, and here is where we're going to put a door, side door to the garage. So it's, you know, you know, more discreet in terms of entering the garage. So no one knows whether you're in or not. Um, and it'll probably go there at some point. And obviously there's an electric box there. Uh, we do have a switch for the main um, collar and um, LED lights. And obviously uh, uh, another outlet, and there's the uh, power box, the you know that controls the electrics in here. But I just wanted to give you a brief tour and show you where we're at. Um, you know, do you think I do, did a good job? I hope I did, and I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Here is a quick update, I thought I'd just show you where we're at. Um, with the garage conversion, um, I've installed a TV, I've installed a heater, we've got the lights set up and installed, um, and I'm about to lay the carpet and I'll just show you how you go about fitting grippers for the carpet, which is basically this. Just basically you need to nail it in next to the skirting board but give you a good centimetre gap in between so it means you can uh, you know pull the actual carpet underneath the skirting board and as you can see I'm going all the way along and around the room um, I'll just show you what I've done with the actual heater to actually hide the cables and make it neat and tidy is use those um, um, nail clips that you can uh, hammer in to attach them to the wall, make them nice and tidy. I've done that with the TV cable as well, as well as getting one of these uh, um, convenient um, cable management system things that you can pop, pop up. Um, and obviously a TV there. And in terms of what I've done with the TV is put the cabling through there, through the cable management system on the actual mount to the TV. And obviously we've got an uh, external um, aerial coming through as well. Um, so as you can see, um, I think I'm getting there. Um, it look, it's starting to look nice. I think a matter of getting this complete is basically that carpet will be fitted. Um, I did have a bit of a problem down here originally with the skirting board actually touching the floor. And as you can see, I need a gap underneath there. Um, so the carpet will sl slot underneath the skirting boards um, and obviously that's where we're at at the moment um, you know it does take a lot of effort so just don't think this is going to be you spending a solid month and you'll get it done believe me you won't I'll just show you lights we've got we've got these um, pool table lights I got them for about £90 and uh, a standard um, dimmable lighting system there um, they're warm light this is cool light for the actual pool table that we're putting in there and we've got a dimmable light here um, obviously that will turn on the lights as you can see and as you can see there we've got the pool table lights working and that's where we're at at the moment um, let me know in the comments what you think you think 
I've done a good job on that. Um, as you can see, we've got power outlets, double ones there, and one over there, and here I've got a special USB one, so we'll be able to charge our phones up through USB. Um, and that's where we're at the moment. I've done more or less the roof. I'll just show you one thing that you might not have seen, which is these um, LED um, columned lights, which are not expensive. They are really cheap to get hold of. They only cost about a tenner each. Um, and that's where we're at the moment. So uh, I'll show you the finished article with the carpet down, and that'll be it. I'll get it more or less straight, but well, obviously it's going to sink into your carpet. Right. Uh, and if you move it anywhere, basically, you get two lads to lift right. and you just adjust the metal feet at the bottom. Right. Right. So if it, if it rolls that way, then two won't come out. Mm. So you move the sides first and then the top. Mm. But seeing you've put it on the stand, you might have leveled it out of the top. Yeah, well, it's, it's plywood in fact. So Sometimes in the garage they slow down to the door, you see. No, it does, but I... But if you level that bit, I have to try and level it as much as it comes. Make sure 
short and sweet but I want to go through the costs of doing my garage conversion uh, a concrete panelled garage into a billiards pool or snooker room area um, so it was a concrete panelled garage which are quite damp so you need to insulate it properly and I've got a list here of how much everything costs me so hopefully this will give you a rundown and an idea of what they cost and also I'll put links in the description box so you can obviously buy these items directly yourself to do your own conversion um, just a quick note I'm not affiliated to any anyone on Amazon or eBay so I won't make any money from this at all I uh, just want to make that clear um, because my videos are to help you guys out there not for me to uh, make any money anyway let's get down to what I bought so, I originally saw a uh, blog online on how to attach battens to the concrete panels and um, to do that you need to get some Compton garage lining clips. Now you get 12 in a pack, two packs are £50. Got them off eBay, they seemed quite expensive so I got some flat bracket mending plate, uh, plates which was half the price, double the quantity um, for £24 a pack which uh, you got 20 in and that seemed better value for me so I got two packs then I needed some Solitex insulation board which is very important you get insulation board it has the uh, uh, silver backing on the front and back to obviously uh, reflect cold and insulate heat as well so I, got, I went for the 40mm thick stuff at £17 each 25 sheets 2.4 meters long by 1.2 meters wide that cost me £475, uh, £50 delivery is included in that. I um, also got some polystyrene bars for the floors, about £50 that cost me. Um, and I also got some XPS um, floor underlay uh, bars which are blue for £100 uh, to put on top of the polystyrene for the flooring. Because I need to make sure the floor is insulated. It's quite important now because you get a lot of cold coming up through the uh, floor. Um, so plywood, very important, this very expensive as well, plywood 12mm, uh, same size as the insulation bars at 2.4m by 1.2, 17 of them, uh, £30 each, so that's £510. I also needed some plywood that was same size but 18mm thick for the floor, £150 that cost. Um, then I needed my wood to do the battens on the walls. Uh, so I went for sawn kill dried wood, C16, 45 by 70 by 2.4 meters. You can obviously use other types of wood uh, if you want it to be treated, um, and that was 334 pound. Tapes, um, gaffer tapes, and aluminium tape, you know, to seal the roof with the insulation board. Join them together. Uh, that cost me £20. Then I need some expanding foam. You'll use a lot of expanding foam when you're doing this uh, just to fill all the gaps in. So I used Everbuild expanding foam which is reasonably priced and it's quite decent stuff. 500mm cans, I've got 20 of those so about £180 there. Uh, a foam gun which is quite important if you're doing a lot of foaming it's a good idea to have a gun to do it rather than using the supplied plastic nozzles that they give you. Uh, £20 for that. Uh, floor levelling compound, 25 kilogram bags, £128 for about 8 of those. What happened was the um, floor levelling compound, um, because it was cold, cracked. So I had to pull it all up. So I decided to put concrete and gravel down instead. Um, that, that was around £100 to do that. So, you know. It's a mistake I made, but it, you know, when you're doing these conversions, you do make mistakes, so you've got to allow for that. Um, Everbill silicon, 
uh, twenty tubes, sixty pound for that. You use a lot of silicon if you want to join up areas and fill in gaps. Uh, a caulk gun that I needed that was fifteen pound. Uh, screws and bolts. You you use a lot of screws, especially a lot of bolts, especially when you're putting the brackets on. Um, you know, the thing is with with concrete panel garages is they're joined together with grooves. The bolts are just for added extra security. You don't necessarily need them in reality because the structure is quite sound. Uh, but the bolts are there for peace of mind, I suppose, and extra security. And what you do is you attach your, your brackets to the bolts. But you'll need a lot of bolts, um, you know, to fit your, your battens on the walls going, going up and vertically. Um, I needed an electrician to do the wiring, obviously, for the uh, power boxes and the lighting. So um, I got someone who did it for £300, and that was quite cheap. If you don't know someone in, in the electrician's world, um, you could possibly spend twice that. Um, so, um, obviously, I got some electric sockets and switches. It's about £100 for that. Light fittings, about £150 for that. Um, in terms of, I've got my pool table light, my, my main fitting light, and the switches, uh, obviously, and um, some extra LED uh, neon lights, um, you know, further down the garage. Um, and then tools, tools, there's a lot of tools you have to buy um, for doing various things, such as sanding belts, grinders, drills, that sort of thing. The only thing I, I want to give you a bit of advice on is, is don't go for the cheap manufacturers because they won't last two minutes. Um, go for the main uh, brands like DeWalt, uh, Bosch, you know, Black & Decker. Go for decent quality stuff that will last. I know it's more, more expensive, more money. Um, sometimes it can be double the price. But trust me, trust me, it, it pays to get the good quality stuff. Maybe not, you might not realise it in this job, but when you're doing another job, um, or say you get a job um, as a tradesman, those tools will, will serve you well. So I, I spent about approximately £250 in tools, um, you know, obviously drills, grinders, uh, belt sanders. It, quite, it came quite, quite handy having a belt sander for sanding the floor. Very important um, to make sure it's level. Um, so that's just the materials really that I've bought. And I'll put the, the, a lot of links in the description box for you guys, so you can uh, buy them if you want to. But um, I spent approximately one, uh, approximately three thousand one hundred and sixteen pound. That's a rough guide. I probably spent a bit more than that. Um, but I've still yet to uh, finish the garage as well. I've got to do the front door and put in a side door. So I probably estimate it's probably worth one to fifteen hundred pound in terms of extra work to be done, um, and then the installation of the side door, I probably say about five hundred pound. That's what I've been quoted by the uh, garage company. So if we were to round it off, maybe four and a half grand to uh, get that done, and then. I bought a pool table, obviously £500 on top of that. That brings it pretty much close to five grand, doesn't it? Um, and then obviously you've got all your accessories. Um, obviously, I did buy a carpet as well on top of that. So that was about £120, I think. Um, so if we round it off, a maximum of £5,500 um, to convert the entire garage. I think that gives you a rough idea of how much it probably will cost you at the end of your project. Um, you may have a few friends that can help you out, or may have, but this is materials. Um, you just can't escape the fact that doing the conversion in your concrete panel garage is going to be expensive, folks. Um, there's no, no round way of getting around it, really. Um, if you want to do a conversion, you want to have a nice pool or snooker table in your garage so you can play. Um, at your convenience or whether you want to have a, an office or a playroom for your kids um, it will be expensive to convert it but it's worth it in the end you know at the end of the day you'll have somewhere you can 
chill out, play a few games, um, relax, or maybe do some work away from family and the kids and the rat race, and just have some me time, I suppose. I suppose this is why people do this, really, because they want to create their own space, a place where they can gather their thoughts, de-stress, relax. They might want to create a gym or a workroom somewhere where they can just relax away from everyone. So I just hope that's helpful. Uh, as I said, I'll put links for all the things I've gone discussed here in the description box. If there's anything else I think of, I'll put it in the description box for you to have a look at. Um, but I do urge you to watch all the garage conversion videos that I've done. Um, especially see, see the final one that I did so you get an idea of what it looks like. But it, it is challenging. You do spend a lot of time. I spent about a year because um, obviously I've got a full time job as well where um, obviously I'm just trying to get a few hours here, a few hours there to do bits of work as I go. Um, but I think once you've got it finished, you'll have a bit of pride in what you've achieved. And that's what it's all about, you know, having a, a bit of pride in yourself that you've achieved something that, you know, you didn't think you could do. And to all the naysayers out there, um, if it, where there's a will, there's a way. You know, if you've got motivation, you can achieve anything. And I hope this video and the other videos I've done to create this, um, you know, living area, this, this playroom, has inspired you to create something. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you. Hello everyone, here is a quick video. I just want to show you a slate bed pool table, UK style. This is seven foot in size. And I want to show you the difference in pool balls. And obviously you can get uh, one sixteenth snooker balls as well as two inch UK balls as well as the two and quarter inch American balls. But I just wanted to show you the problems you may encounter if you try and use different size balls on a UK pool table. So without a further ado, let's have a look what we've got here. So obviously, here you can see I've managed to move the slate bed um, over to the right a little bit. It's advisable you try and do this with two people um, as you could drop it. Um, so obviously, I advise you highly never to do this alone. With that being said, um, obviously I've attached this to the roof, um, the actual um, lid, and moved the bed over. Now, the problem I've encountered here is this particular bar here, which is stopping um, full-size balls going through. So obviously here we have um, two and a quarter inch American. Here we have one sixteenth. Um, snooker table ball and here we have a UK ball which is 2 inch different sizes obviously for different tables but I wanted to come up with a way of using American balls on my table however what I've experienced is um, that you can use it on nearly all the pockets um, the middle one here um, the top ones you can physically pop them in the pockets and it works fine. However, for some bizarre reason, unknown to me, um, this bar here is restricting the American balls going through, as I will demonstrate. So let's have a look what we're doing here. So, as you can see, uh, we have three balls here. Um, I think what I'm probably best doing is do it in reverse order. So here you can see we have the UK 2 inch ball, 
the snooker table ball, which is one sixteenth, which is only a tiny bit bigger than the UK balls, and obviously the American balls are much bigger, at two and a quarter inch. So, without further ado, I will show you um, it running through the system, and you'll be able to hear the ball drop. Um, where it's dropping is a compartment where the ball return is. Um, I've removed the um, the lid, which uh, contains the running system for the actual uh, pool table. As you can see here, this is it. Um, I've removed the coin system, so obviously it will obviously so the bigger balls will flow through onto uh, the bottom of the table. But I just wanted to illustrate the issue you may experience on a UK table. Obviously this will apply for American tables, but uh, let's have a look. So, we move that out of the way. So this is the UK ball. Obviously that will run through uh, with no problems. As you can hear, it's dropped and that's fine, no problems. Um, here is a slightly bigger ball and uh, this will run through no problem either. There you go, no problem with that. However, when we try a bigger ball, like the American ball, we experience a problem. Hopefully you'll be able to see this in the video. So, I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's stopped just there. Um, so this supporting beam here is preventing that ball going through. Um, however, if I show you um, that on another pocket, just move this over. Um, this is the middle pocket. I'll put this through again. Um, what's happening is it's missing that supporting beam there. We put that through. And that goes to the uh, bottom of the table as well, no problems. So, so what we're getting out of this video is that in the um, top two, uh, four pockets you will be able to pop American pull balls quite easily, no problems, on a UK table that is. However, the two bottom pockets will accept the box. Um, I suppose a way around this is possible, possibly to put some foam in those two bottom um, pockets so obviously you, you don't have to go to the palaver of moving the slate bed like I've done here. Um, but I just wanted to illustrate um, that you should be fine with snooker balls on your regular, um, if you want to use full size regulation snooker balls. Um, on your uh, UK pool table, you will be fine, no problems. Um, you can obviously certainly use your two inch balls, no problems at all. However, if you want to practice using um, American balls, uh, which are two inch and a quarter, uh, you will experience a problem like we have here. Now, you might be asking yourself, why do I want to use American balls? on a UK table? Well, the, the answer to that question really is very similar to anyone who wants to use, use um, Chinese 8 ball tables and use American balls on, that, on those. It's all about um, experimenting as well as enhancing your skills because clearly putting a larger ball in a smaller pocket uh, is more challenging and makes it more skillful to do and I suspect if you can master that skill um, you will be head and shoulders above anyone in your local area um, so this is the this is what professionals do you know they practice um, with bigger smaller balls tight pockets um, you may see some videos out there where they put um, cushion inserts into the actual pockets to make them smaller something that is quite often done um, to challenge themselves, especially those of you who are watching this video from America um, your pockets on your um, pull 
tables are very large and to be honest with you pot, potting in the bottom and top pocket seems relatively easy too easy in fact um, and if you compare that to snooker which are a lot tighter and harder to pot this is the reason um, why um, professionals you know do put inserts into those American table pockets to make it tighter to make it harder for them because ultimately if you go to a competition you want to make sure you are at the top of your game and able to perform and to do that you need to you know up your skills a bit more to make it more challenging so I just wanted to show you a problem you might experience with having a UK table wanting to use American balls so so to recap in the top po two pockets um, you can use your American balls no problem in the middle pockets you'll be able to use your American balls no problem however in the bottom two pockets there's an issue um, I'm not sure how this issue could be resolved um, I suppose it's possible you could think about um, grinding a little bit under the metal support where the balls would pass so there would be room to pass under um, that's a possibility however would it would it actually damage stru structural integrity of the table if you did that I don't know um, it's something I am going to think about but I just wanted to <coughs> show you more or less uh, an issue you could have if you want to use American balls on your UK table um, any comments uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel um, but let me know what you think you think there's a way around this um, anyone out there who has some useful hints and tips about using American balls on your UK pool table please let me know I'm all ears um, but you know it's an ongoing journey for me learning um, at some point I'll probably create a separate channel dedicated to playing pool but let me know in the comments what you think do you think uh, playing American balls on the UK table is viable um, will it increase your skill set do you think it is a positive thing to do I hope to see you in the future and have a nice evening